Grissom, let me go to you. You know, uh, proponents of the death penalty say a big thing is admitting guilt mm -hmm. and, and, and taking responsibility for your actions. And here, one of the main reasons people are saying that uh, Stan Tukey Williams should still be executed tonight is because he's not admitting to his crimes. What do you think? Well, you know, even his defense team now is, is, is purporting to try to bring forth some additional evidence that might um, speak to his innocence or, or at least cast doubt on whether he's guilty of all these crimes. Um, you know, the shell casing is, is a piece of direct evidence that, that goes to a gun that he at one time owned. He, he said that he didn't own it at, at that particular time that the murder occurred, and he was a member of a gang. Um, so uh, if he is truly innocent, then, uh, you know, he shouldn't be admitting guilt just to try to save himself. And he even said early on in the case that uh, if me maintaining my innocence is going to cause my death, and so be it, uh, because I am innocent. I think it's a little different than Westerfield. We don't have the DNA, we don't have the type of forensic evidence that ties him to the crime the same way that Westerfield does. So do you think admitting guilt is a prerequisite to redemption or rehabilitation? Well, I think in a moral sense it is. I mean, if you are guilty of a crime and, and you want to redeem yourself uh, morally, yes, absolutely. Um, but it, there's another aspect to clemency, and that is the humanitarian aspect uh, of it. I mean, this is a person who has uh, you know, to some degree, turned his life around in prison. He's written books. He's tried to get gang members out of gangs. He's tried to talk to the children of this country to keep to get them to, to not join gangs. Yeah, he's victims. Killing a defendant like this is really just saying to the victims, okay, now it's over. But then as we see with all the appeals, is it really over? Are we doing more damage by stringing this along with a decade of appeals? Well, I mean, that's, I mean, again, that, that goes back to the debate of the, the death penalty. The death penalty is, is certainly not cost effective. I mean, it costs mm -hmm. millions and millions of more of dollars in addition to just, uh, if you were to to put them away for the rest of their life and not allow them to have parole. Um, you know, it, it, that, that, it's, it's, a, it's a good point. It is, you know, with the Rollins case, um, you know, he confessed to the crime. So, you know, what is the point of killing him other than to appease the, the victim's families? Uh, and our criminal justice system has never been about that. It shouldn't be about that. Um, our, it's punitive in nature, but we, we're not supposed to allow emotions and sympathy. In fact, every jurisdiction in the jury instructions, it says to the jury, it's one of the, the, the things the judge reads to the jury, you are neither to let sympathy nor emotion, uh, you know, sway you in your decision. It's supposed to be an objective system. We're supposed to be above that. It's why we don't allow the victims' families to determine the sentences in these cases. Well, I'll tell you, you know, people who are advocates of the death penalty say it's a deterrent. Mm -hmm. But when you look at a guy this sick, how do you deter a serial killer? Well, well, you don't. I mean, that's the problem. Serial killers are not deterred by anything. I mean, they have mental issues. There's something wrong in their brain. Um, you know, they're dealing with their own mental issues that, that cause them to kill and cause them to think differently than other people. That's a philosophical debate we've had for centuries. It's never been proven to be a deterrent at all. In fact, the, the, the parts of the country that have the highest crime rate also have the most active application of the death penalty. And the, and the reverse is true, too. So uh, nobody, nobody with any credit ability is could make the argument that the death penalty is an actual deterrence to crime. Deborah, let us eye for an eye argument. Well, I think she brings up a good point to begin with when she talks about that there are different um, factors that are, that will lead to the death penalty being um, imposed in certain different circumstances. And I think that's one of the problems with the death penalty. I mean, different states have different aggravating factors. And we have a, two death penalty cases right now in the U.S. Supreme Court that just we just heard oral arguments um, on. Now, as far as an eye for an eye, that's not what our criminal justice system is about. You okay. don't to get to rape somebody because uh, they, you know, they're convicted of rape. We don't assault people because they're convicted of assault. And furthermore, an eye for an eye is, I mean, that's a biblical teaching. It comes from the Old Testament. And if we're going to follow the Old Testament. You know, there are other things the Old Testament says, too. And, and if you read Leviticus, they talk about killing people if you work on the Sabbath. They talk about the inequality of women. They talk about fathers being allowed to sell their daughters into slavery. They talk about killing people for touching pig skin. So, uh, you know, the eye for an eye argument, it's religious in nature. There's a reason why we don't follow that in our criminal justice system, and we shouldn't be fought. I mean, what is it about the, the death penalty that suddenly we go back and say, oh, an eye for an eye? That's an easy argument to make. It's tougher to be a little bit uh, more objective about it. That's a very interesting. In light of that, Stone Grissom, um, it plays a role, but at the same time as we discussed, some people have that whole eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth start type argument. But ultimately, some people believe that the United States is stooping really low when it <laughs> executes people. It's like we're like 
the killer themselves. Yeah, I mean, we have to first remember that clemency doesn't mean that we're letting uh, Tukey Williams out of jail. I mean, okay. he, still sends, he still spends the rest of his life uh, behind bars without the possibility of parole. So clemency is not we're giving him a pass. We're just not killing him. Uh, and, and, and that brings up the, the broader point of you know, the United States, we kill more of our citizens, state-sanctioned state killing, than any other country in the world, except for three other countries, and that's Iran, China, and Saudi Arabia. And then that, as far as a record on human rights, uh, that's not the greatest company to keep. Uh, you know, most, uh, even the international communities have come out and abolished the death penalty, not because these people are good or they want to give these people who commit crimes a pass, but because our system should be about something more than that. We just don't go kill people. Uh, you, don't, you don't say, you know what, killing is wrong. So we're going to kill you for it. I mean, exactly. that, that, that's a kind of a silly argument. It gets caught in its own um, argument to some degree. Yeah, you sound kind of like a.